Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Oscar nominee and Emmy winner Liz Garbus, director of the memorable episode six of season two of Yellow Jackets titled Qui. Liz, this was your first episode for the series. Why did you decide to jump on board in this second season? And what about this episode in particular excited you the most? I mean, why did I decide to jump on board on the second season? Did you watch the first season? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I just loved Yellow Jackets, um, the first season of Yellow Jackets. I thought it was such an original, so smart, so entertaining, so well-crafted, well-acted. Um, I was just a huge fan. And so, um, you know, when I was talking to my agents about what I'd love to do in television. That was like right at the top of my list. Um, and they went out and, and you know, pitched me. And and then when I met the showrunners, it was just like, it was, you know, it was great synergy. Um, I felt like, you know, the show is doing so many interesting things, right? It's sort of exploring the violence that is nascent in adolescence. Um, in all of us by thrusting these young folks in these extreme circumstances to bring out all of that, those themes, as well as this kind of really interesting balance between the, the spiritual and the rational, um, which is, you know, at war in the show. Um, and I just, you know, I just found it to be such a smart, original, provocative show. So, oh, and when I got episode six, um, you know, I was thrilled. I was, I knew that um, this would be um, a remarkable, tough, exciting episode for Sophie and Elise, um, you know, going through childbirth and the loss. Um, you know, I had some incredible Melanie Linsky monologues. I had some great, you know, Christina Reach. I mean, you know, the episode really had it all. And it was so satisfying to direct the episode where the six adult yellow jackets come together in Lottie's compound. So um, I feel like I hit the jackpot. How did you decide on that episode? Is that something where you throw your hat in the ring and then the producers come back and say, we think you would be best for this episode? Or do you sort of read all the scripts and say, I want this episode? How did... How do you come to that conclusion? No, I mean, it's basically what you said. It's, um, you know, the, my, you know, essentially the, we talk to the showrunners about what they think is the best fit for me as a director. Um, and like, for instance, episode, you know, there was another episode where I inquired, you know, my schedule was shifting, if that would be a good one. And they were saying, oh, they really were hoping for me for this particular episode. So I don't get to read all the scripts until pretty close to my own pre-production. So when I'm committing to an episode, I'm kind of going on faith that me and the showrunners have had a good meeting of the minds and sort of are in sync. And in this case, you know, I've, at least from my perspective, we certainly were. And this was a traumatic episode for Shauna. It's the episode where she has the baby. So talk about working with Sophie and Elise and capturing the performance. What impressed you the most about this young cast? Because, I mean, they go through a lot in this episode and you're going back and forth, not only between Shauna and Sophie's birth, but also all of those other teenagers that are reacting to everything that's happening in front of them. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this episode was a tremendous challenge and, you know, Sophie, you know, just hurtled over that bar. Um, she is so committed. I think she, you know, she came into the episode with like a humble amount of anxiety about it, um, which made her open to work and to like prepare and um, be really open and collaborative. And, um, you know, she had it in her all along, but she is just one of those actors who is never gonna rest on her laurels. Um, and, you know, we looked at videos of births. We looked at videos of great births. We looked at videos of traumatic births. We talked about breastfeeding, um, you know, and what it was like not being able to get a baby to latch on. That is something a lot of people who have nursed babies have experienced. Um, it is really psychologically devastating to not be able to nurse your child. Um, so there's all kinds of things we were able to talk about um, in, in, in preparation for the episode. We also made sure we had rehearsal time. We blocked everything beforehand. You know, that doesn't always happen on a TV show. I was really grateful for that. 
Um, and as you said, all the all the teen yellow jackets had heavy lists this episode. We were all in that cabin. There was no outside, you know, there was no hunting. So the blocking for episode six, I just, I wanted to keep it feeling alive in that small space. Um, so that involved everybody <laughs> working with me and remembering some, you know, complicated, um, not that complicated, but, you know, re you know, just working together and getting that rehearsal time and um, being supportive um, also of the space that Sophie needed, which they were. I mean, it's an incredible, that, that, that cast is so talented. Did you have a different approach when you uh, are shooting the adult yellow jackets? Cause it's a completely different mood, uh, scenery, vibe. It's almost like two shows that sort of come together as, as one. Um, what, what was the biggest challenge for you in, in doing that? Well, what I love so much about this episode, like I understand the perspective of the two different shows because of course it's two different timelines. But what I loved about this episode so much is that so much of the trauma that's informing these adults is really being seated in these episodes. I mean, of course, for Sophie and Elise, for young Shauna, we see um, the trauma of having lost the child of Jeff's first baby. You understand the number that could do on her head and how it could inform her marriage moving forward to Jeff. Um, you know, for Misty, we saw the loss of her friend and her guilt um, and how that would, you know, so I feel like we were able to, in the second season and in my episode as well, really kind of tie those characters together, exploring the trauma that happened in the wilderness that made them the adults who they are today. Um, but in terms of my approach, um, every actor is totally different. Um, and so it's not so much about um, the timelines, like the different uh, timelines, it's just about the actors and supporting them with what they need. Um, that I feel like is is the biggest, um, one of the biggest things that I that I try to rise to in an episode. Is that difficult for you then to come in for just one episode? Um, or uh, we've seen you do that. We were nominated just a couple of years ago for Handmaid's Tale. Um, so you're someone that comes into these female uh, empowerment TV shows, but what is it like <laughs> to just step into one episode? And how do you keep everything kind of cohesive with what fans are seeing? Because we don't know that as viewers. Yeah, right. I know. I know. It seems wild that it works, right? Having guest directors. Okay. Um, you know, for, first of all, I mean, I, I think it's about the prep, right? And um, I had a great producing director, Jeff Bird, who I was working with, who kind of, you know, sat me down. He's like, okay, here's Christina. This is what she's like. You know, like we do the whole kind of director download thing. Um, worked, um, you know, so I'm always kind of collecting information, collecting information for my ADs, you know, who likes to really rehearse, who really wants to like walk in and try one and then talk about it. You know, I'm collecting all of that information. Um, and then we get to the read through and, you know, for the actors in my episodes who have those heavy lists, lists, you know, like in Handmaids, it was Lizzie Moss and, and, um, and the commander the, who she killed <laughs> in my episode, um, you know, it was like getting time with them, you know, make doing an old school, you know, director working with actors prior to the shoot. It yeah. kind of helps. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's basically like that. And, you know, it, it doesn't take too long to kind of get into their zone with them. And you have this long history of documentary filmmaking and nonfiction, two Oscar nominations for best documentary feature. How has that prepared you and how does that inform your approach in filming something with sort of this gritty reality that Yellow Jackets has? Well, I feel like from the incredible life experiences I have been um, able to witness as a documentary filmmaker, um, you know, it's such a, being a documentary filmmaker, you have people opening their lives to you in these moments of, extraordinary change, achievement, crisis, like, you know, you kind of are there for these, you know, you're not usually there just when they're late, waiting for the bus. I mean, you're there when they're waiting for the bus too, <laughs> but like, you know, the film is usually around the sort of uh, an extreme event in their lives. Um, and I think I've had the privilege of witnessing a lot of people go through a lot of different things. And, um, you know, my job as a documentarian is to observe and then to share perspective um, with those actors to, to help them do their best job. What filmmaker or movie inspired you as like, growing up? Like what, what led you to become a documentary filmmaker and then continue this path toward scripted work? Um, films that have inspired me 
Um, you know, Clute is one of my favorite films with Jane Fonda. Um, as a documentarian, I mean, Barbara Koppel was a hero of mine, is a hero of mine. I mean, she was one of the only women doing it, you know, before I came up. Um, in college, sorry, Steve James, I saw Hoop Dreams. And um, that just made me think like, man, if I can make a show that's as entertaining, but as deep, you know, I would love to, you know, take whatever, whatever I have and, and give myself to it. So those are some. And you also have a documentary series in the running this year, Harry and Megan on the doc side. So you're, you're still juggling scripted and unscripted. <laughs> yeah. how, you know, how do you do that? How do you make time for that? And what was that project like for you? I mean, that has gotten a lot of attention. I mean, I just, I, for me, the kind of interchange of, of genres has just been healthy, exciting, each kind of side in, enriching the other. Um, you know, visual tricks that you're able to do in scripted, trying to bring those into docs, like to just keep elevating both the genre. And as we talked about emotional learnings, you know, from docs, bringing it over into scripted. So for me, that melange is just like, it's such a sweet spot. And um, I hope I can continue to balance my work that way. Yeah. Well, just before you leave, did you, see, I mean, did you get the whole script for the whole series or do you just get your episode for Yellow Jackets? Like, what did you think of the, of the end? Did you see, did you see the whole ending and. Uh, oh yeah. Well, I will get, I definitely get, you know, before I shoot my episode, I'm reading of course, all the scripts that come before. Otherwise I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, but then yes, I stay on the distribution list of the scripts and they keep sending them. <laughs> so I get to read the ones after me too. Um, and you know, Karen, Karen Kusama killed it with that last episode and, uh, well killed it is, you know, is a certain word, but, um, you know, we kind of knew that was coming, um, in episode six and, uh, you know, that was heavy. That was heavy. Juliet is so extraordinary. Um, so it was really, you know, a bittersweet sort of experience um, to know that her character was going to be meeting its end. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, but yeah, I thought I thought it was just, a, you know, a terrific season. It's just such a special show. You'd, so you'd come back for season three. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, congratulations on such incredible work uh, this season on Yellow Jackets. Um, best of luck at the upcoming Emmy nominations. And thanks for chatting with Gold Derby today. Thank you, Denton. I appreciate it. Yeah.